Jamie Juster von Hatebreed, Icepick und Kingdom of Sorrow steht hier neben mir. Der Mann ist ein ziemlicher Workaholic und wir haben uns überlegt, wir wollen ihn mal in unserem Schwatzkasten-Interview ein bisschen zu seiner Persönlichkeit befragen, einfach mal ein bisschen mehr über ihn erfahren. Jamie, uh, where and how did you uh, grow up? I grew up in New Haven, Connecticut. Well, we're, we were like a lower middle class family, so it was, my neighborhood was a lot of children everywhere, so it was like craziness all the time. Always people fighting, yelling, screaming, getting into trouble. You know, I have a younger brother and an older sister, and all my neighbors were, you know, we had one family that had five kids, another family that had three, another family that had four, so it was like always wild, crazy stuff going on. We were always getting into trouble. Both of my parents were complete uh, workaholics, so. They were never around, so we just ran free in the streets. <laughs> and what's your worst and your best childhood memory? Um, one of my best childhood memories uh, would be just like the summertime, like all of us kids just re like causing so much trouble. I mean, really getting into a lot of trouble. You know, there's like a bike race where there's all these like people on bikes that uh, they, they practice for this race. and. I don't know what we thought we would hide in the woods and hit them with like these big things of dirt. And then my little brother actually hit one of the front guys and all the bikes crashed and people got very hurt and we almost got arrested and they wanted to send us to juvenile like um, rehabilitation and it was crazy. The police came and like we thought it was funny because we were sick and twisted little kids, you know what I mean? But it was very bad. The guys got really hurt and like it was in the newspaper. It was terrible. So I guess at school you also were more like one of the troublemakers than one of the with the good grades. Well, I, I was I started as class clown and then kind of graduated to troublemaker. But I was definitely one of those kids that the teachers would always say, you know, you hate school so much you just shouldn't come. <laughs> and for a teacher to say that, you know, <laughs> There's no wonder I didn't really make it out of the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And how did you uh, get in touch with music? Was it by friends or by your parents? Yeah, you know, actually, uh, my cousin Jonathan um, was into like everything, like blues and metal and hardcore and punk, and he had a very vast musical collection. And then also, um, I went to a camp where the camp counselor had like everything from, you know, Fishbone to Mighty Boston's to Minor Thread to Judge to Youth of Today. And, you know, then I would learn, I would read all the thanks lists. And that, that actually, that same year, uh, Cowboys from Hell came out and I heard that. I think that was, that was um, 90. So, you know, and I was like just about to turn 13. So, you know, that was a good time. If you would have to put together your favorite uh, lineup with uh, musicians that are dead or living, who would be in your uh, personal favorite band? If I was the singer and I could choose any band, you know, just like a, like a fantasy band, maybe, you know, we'd have Carrie King and Zach Wilde on guitar. And then maybe, you know, Michael Anthony from Van Halen on bass. I don't know, maybe Dave Lombardo on drums or, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe Gene Hoagland. Uh, there's so many great guys out there, but it always changes. Like the last band I thought would be cool would be um, would be Kerry King, Hatfield, um, uh, Tempesta on drums, or maybe uh, who else was I just saying? Um, Rex Brown on bass. You know, there's a lot of I don't know. We could we could talk for hours about different cool projects that could happen. And to, uh, what are the free records you would bring with you to a Lonely Island, the typical free Lonely Island records? I'd probably bring Weezer, because they have a song called Island in the Sun that I like, so maybe, maybe that would be fitting if I was going to be on an island and I would listen to that. Um, I don't know, I probably wouldn't bring a metal if I was going to an island. I don't know if I would bring a metal record. Maybe I'd bring like something more mellow. Maybe, I don't know, maybe like Deftones White Pony. That's a, that's like, it's still sort of metal, but it's, it's more mellow. Um, and then maybe I would bring like a, like a Rose Tattoo record or something, like a rock record, a drinking record. Because if it was on an island, I would want to maybe just drink and swim and lay on the beach, you know? 
is there a celebrity that you would love to meet one day and that you would love to talk with? The guy who played Mike Myers in the Halloween mm. movies, he seems cool, maybe. <laughs> Can you remember what was uh, the worst show you ever played? You know, where nothing worked the way you wanted it to work? <laughs> yeah, one of the worst shows I ever played was South by Southwest. I think it was 98. We played to one person. Oh. <laughs> one. And he ended up being our lawyer. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that was cool. At least he watched the show and I sang to just one guy the whole time and he was cool. And you know what? And I got to say hello to him. Maybe he'll see this. His name's Ian Montone and he actually manages the band The White Stripes and he's a great guy. What is the craziest, the funniest um, tour party memory you have in your mind, like a, tr a crazy uh, tour story that you can tell? I guess there are so tons, many. but are there some that you would like, that you can pick, that you will tell your children's children? One time we did a, we, we played a show and some girls said, come to our house, you know, our parents are away and you can party at our house. So, of course, and this is like 1996, this is not, this is before we had, you know, a record deal and everything, but it was, you know, a local show. And so we went to the show, we went to the, the, the girl's house and she was a nice girl, but, you know, a real nice girl wouldn't invite scumbag band guys and all their friends to their house. So she, maybe she was a nice girl, but she was a bad girl. So we were, di we were diving off her roof into her pool we put every piece of furniture, like, from her backyard, from her porch, from her house, in the pool. My buddy Dennis shit on a cookie tray and cooked it. I mean, it was just crazy. There was plants. There was, like, this going in there, this thing. Everything went in the pool. Um, you know, the girls were naked, passed out. There was, like, it was crazy. It was like one of those parties you see in, like, a movie. <laughs> 